10 Special Considerations in the Management of Pediatric Trauma Anatomical and Physiological Differences Children have unique anatomical and physiological characteristics that require specific considerations in trauma management. Their larger head-to-body ratio increases their susceptibility to head injuries, and their pliable ribs mean that significant internal organ injuries can occur without obvious rib fractures. Additionally, their smaller blood volume makes them more susceptible to shock from seemingly minor blood loss. Airway Considerations Managing a child's airway requires a thoughtful approach due to anatomical variations like a proportionally larger tongue and a more anterior larynx. Using appropriately sized equipment is crucial, and medical professionals should be prepared to use a straight laryngoscope and cuffless tubes for younger patients. Shock Management Children often compensate for shock differently than adults making it crucial to recognize subtle signs. Tachycardia and poor perfusion, such as pallor and delayed capillary refill, may be the earliest signs of shock, while hypotension is a late and dangerous finding. Fluid resuscitation should be initiated promptly with 20 milliliters per kilogram boluses of isotonic crystalloid, and blood products should be considered early in the resuscitation if there is ongoing hemorrhage or a poor response to fluids. Head Trauma Management Children are particularly vulnerable to head injuries because of their large head-to-body ratio and softer skulls. While bulging fontanelles may occur without coma, persistent or worsening vomiting, any seizure activity, or a declining Glasgow Coma Scale require immediate attention and a head computed tomography scan. Remember that the modified Glasgow Coma Scale should be used for children under 4 years old. Spinal cord injury. Spinal cord injury without radiographic abnormality, sciura, is more common in children due to the flexibility of their ligaments and joint capsules. Immobilization of the spine is crucial if there is any suspicion of spinal injury, even in the absence of radiographic findings. Abdominal trauma. Children's abdominal organs are less protected making them susceptible to injuries even without obvious external signs. A computed tomography scan is the gold standard for diagnosing abdominal injuries, and nasogastric tube decompression is essential for managing distended abdomens, particularly in stressed children who may swallow air. Musculoskeletal injuries While children's bones are more flexible and less likely to fracture, Growth plate injuries can have long-term consequences for bone development and require specialized orthopedic care. Multiple fractures in varying stages of healing should raise suspicion for non-accidental trauma. Pain and psychological management. Pain management should utilize age-appropriate strategies, including both pharmacological and non-pharmacological methods. Addressing fear and anxiety can improve pain management, and involving child life specialists can be beneficial for a child's psychological well-being. Family involvement. Families are essential members of the care team and should be kept informed and involved in decision-making processes. Providing clear and honest communication with families can help reduce their anxiety and facilitate the child's recovery. Child abuse or non-accidental trauma. Medical professionals must maintain a high index of suspicion for child abuse or non-accidental trauma and be aware of red flags, such as inconsistencies in the history, injury patterns that don't match the reported mechanism, or delays in seeking care. Prompt recognition and reporting of suspected child abuse is crucial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.